is phenomenal. So let me please welcome Maria Jane. Yeah, on the uh, that one or the other one? The other one. Yeah, the other one. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I check this. The uh, yeah, we'll we'll find it. That's okay. Let me get out the light. Hi everybody. <laughs> so um, so many of you have read or heard or seen me somewhere on the, in the news, right? In the last month or so. And some of you follow me on Facebook, which I'm really happy to meet some of you here today. You know, um, when this photo, What's Your Excuse, came out, it's pretty powerful. How many of you guys saw that picture and had an initial reaction? What was your reaction? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, you know, I don't mind some constructive criticism. So if you felt any negative feelings or if somebody you knew had some negative feelings, I have a lot of people on Facebook and via email who have told me they've had discussions with their friends that, um, over this controversy. So, did anyone hear anything negative? Yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of women that I've talked to, I have two daughters, a wife, everybody's working out and all that. And um, some of them had the reaction of, what's my excuse for what? For not looking like this girl or for not something else? So, there's no backstory or context to it. And, um, and I did read a lot about the af after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the thing. What's my excuse for not for not looking like her? Yeah, and so you know, to give you some of that backstory, I created this photo last year. This was taken when my youngest was eight months old. It was actually um, photographed in August, and I remember that day I took it. I was I was so proud. You know, here I did. I looked great. I made a poll. I was gonna take a picture with my kids at the end of summer. Of course, it's the very very end of summer because I kept putting it off because I wasn't ready yet. But I took this photo and I knew that it was going to be a powerful image because I gave birth in 2009, 2010, and 2011. <laughs> those, those every single year, and I was able to get my body back. And I did that through a lot of discipline, focus, goal setting, passion, consistency. And so I thought, let me post this picture on my Facebook page. I mean, it's fitness oriented. Everybody who knows me, especially people who've known me for a very long time, knows that I'm very passionate about fitness. And I have pretty good intention, a lot of integrity. So I posted it on my Facebook page. I've never posted it anywhere else. And then it just went viral. <laughs> and it went a little nuts last year, too. I mean, I was on Good Day Sacramento. Did anyone see that on Good Day Sacramento last year? So I was on Good Day Sacramento at the 9 a.m. hour just talking about that photo and the controversy that it stirred. And a lot of people were pretty impressed. They said, wow, you've got a great physique. I only have one child or I have no children or my children are 20 years old. What's my excuse for not taking care of my health? Because everyone knows your health is important to you. But of course, I got some of the bad emails. And I got the, you're a fat shamer. You know, you are a bully. You are a disgrace to woman. You, um, you promote eating disorders. How dare you? And so this went on for about a year. I didn't really respond to it because I'm not a negative person. I don't like to respond to negativity. But then one day, I think it was in September, I received an email one morning and um, I don't know what was going through my head, but I do know I popped open an email and I knew that the photo was recirculating itself. And I saw an email that said, you should be ashamed of yourself. Here you are, uh, absolutely not a role model for women anywhere. You should take your profile picture down. And that's when I got onto my computer and said, you know what, this is gonna be my first and my final apology about this picture. I'm not gonna mention that I'm not a personal trainer, that I don't have a nanny, that I struggled with my genetics. I'm not even gonna say that I indulged while I was pregnant or used my growing belly for being active. But what I will say is that whatever came out of your head are the thoughts that you created. So you need to own it. I didn't create it. You created it. I didn't call you fat. I didn't say you're lazy. I didn't say why are you injured and not walking right now. I didn't say what is your excuse for not looking like me. I said what's your excuse. And whatever your insecurities that you had at that moment, you applied onto me, which was not my fault. It's absolutely yours. And you know what I did in that moment that they were upset? I took their power that they gave to me and I gave back to them. And they should have appreciated it because when you give power to somebody, you're giving them the power to change, to make their own choice, to realize that through their own thoughts, they are in charge of their own actions and therefore their own destiny. 
So I thought that was a pretty powerful message, don't you? Yeah. Oh, so did a lot of other people. <laughs> Yahoo created the story. Um, I forgot what date it was posted. But at that time, that photo and that message was viewed 16 million times. It was liked over 200,000 times. I don't know how many shares or comments, but it was going out of my control viral at this point. And I was able to go on the Good Morning America, Today Show, CNN. I interviewed in, uh, I didn't interview in Australia, but I was on satellite with them on the Today Show. I did other international shows in the UK. I've gotten emails from Peru, from <coughs> India, from Mexico, from Africa. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is out of my control, viral, crazy. People who said that I have inspired them. People who have said that because of me, even though they have five kids and or they have um, they've been divorced or they all they did was focus on their business, they are so unhealthy. And because of this picture, because of my message, they're realizing they can take ownership of their destiny and they are going to work out today and they're going to take care of their bodies. Which wow, that made my heart sink. And I remember on this trip to um, New York, I was on the Bethany show, and I was you know at this time people always ask how are you doing and. Of course, it's, it's very overwhelming. Naturally, everyone wants to talk to you. You know, I, I didn't know what I was doing in that first two weeks when I went viral and everyone wanted me to be on their show. But I remember distinctly in the, the car, taking us back to the airport, looking at the window in the silence of my brain, you know, after all this you know, hoopla went about, I just started to cry. And I was in a lot of tears. He, my husband was sleeping. He was tired. <laughs> he said he's been so helpful during this whole experience. But I just started to cry because I realized to myself, why is this happening? Like, I don't get it. Like, why is this all happening right now? And then I remembered of my first memory as a child of why I developed this passion. And I thought about my mother. And I don't want to cry because I will cry. I can't remember. <laughs> you know, growing up with a mother who was so ambitious, she was you know, she started as a state worker. My parents met in New Zealand, came here with nothing. Um, my dad, grad, um, he, he retired as a sergeant in the, in the San Francisco Police Department, and my mom was a state worker. But she started, um, they started in real estate, they started in real estate, and then in San Francisco. And then they um, opened care homes for the elderly here in Sacramento. <coughs> so here's my mom. I used to, you know, your mother is usually your first love. Anyone, does anyone have kids out there? You know that your, your child loves you. They're so dependent on you. So I don't remember a memory of not having my mom take prescription pills some, for some reason, for some health-related reason. I mean, she had diabetes in her 20s, strokes in her 30s, heart attacks in her 40s, and a kidney transplant. She's 52 right now, and she's thriving, but she's not striving. And I thought about that memory, and that made me cry because that memory made me want to eat healthier. I mean, I grew up just like the rest of you guys. I ate fruit rollers. I loved apple jacks. My favorite cereal was Little Charm. You know, I, I loved all that stuff. I saw what my mom was eating, and I knew, because you have, as a child, you know what's right and wrong. You know that that's not healthy for you. So I started making healthier choices at a young age. You know, and to give you more background about myself, I started, you know, I went to Laguna Creek High School with Rochelle. We were two years together. <laughs> you know, I was, I was a very shy kid, funny. To, you know, I was, I was shy, but I loved cheerleading. And I um, became, um, I, I got involved into pageants. I competed, I was Miss Philippine Sacramento when I was 16, went to Toronto, won an inter a national title, went to, internet, to Texas, won an international title. I mean, basically I was pretty successful at pageantry. Um, I graduated from UC Davis with two majors and a minor. You know, at 22, I decided to move to San Francisco, and I didn't know anybody there. So what did I do? I joined a pageant because you do you, you you work with your resources, you do what you can. So I joined a pageant, became Miss San Francisco Chinatown, um, found an awesome place for $600, full house, and I just rented it. I mean, Whoa. yeah, that's just all about building connections, building a network. I just did what I knew. That's what you do, right? And then here I was, 22. I was at the time Miss Philippines USA at this point. Started Miss Philippines Sacramento, now I'm Miss Philippines USA. Competed in Manila, Philippines. You know, I, met, I became Miss Bikini California. I, uh, I placed top five in two national competitions. And that year, 2003 exactly, 10 years ago in November was my last competition. And that was the day, that was the month that I also threw up for the first time. 
now I'm going to start getting teary again. <laughs> you know, I struggled with an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. I was bulimic. And it was a really tough period in my life because I realized here I am, I accumulated all this success. And I was, you know, I was the you know, epitome of what you should be doing in your early 20s. I was, I, was, I just got two covers of a magazine. I was in great shape. I graduated, but I felt like nothing. I felt so empty. I felt like I was a hamster on a wheel, constantly moving but not going anywhere because my idea of life and happiness just wasn't matching up. Because life and happiness, it's not about what you're attaining. It's not what you're getting. It's what you're giving. It's about passion and it's about purpose. And I realized that in my moments of deafness when I was over a toilet bowl, feeling so empty about who I was and what my purpose in life was. And that's when I decided right then and there that I was going to dedicate my life to fitness and to spread the positive words of taking care of your body. And that was a tough thing to do because right then and there, I wasn't taking care of my body. For three or four years, I was throwing up, binging and throwing up um, two to three times a day, four to five times a week. And finally, after a very long period of recovery, I finally recovered. And I ended up gaining 30 pounds because that's what happens. There's always, the, you have to deal with it. And I knew I would, I would have to deal with it. It was not a matter of if, but when I would eventually gain weight because my body knew that I wasn't going to feed it or that I was going to throw up the food that I was feeding it. And a lot of women, whether they know it or not, especially if you're going on diets and disorder, you have a disordered eating and your body doesn't trust you. Mm -hmm. And at, at one point it shuts down. And my body shut down for years. I was 155 pounds at my heaviest. And I was exercising more than I did before. I was eating less carbs than I did before, but I was not dropping an ounce because my body didn't trust me anymore. Mm -hmm. And in this time period, I met my husband in 2007. He loved me just the way I was. <laughs> and, and, we, and, you know, we started with nothing, you know. I moved back home from San Francisco to Sacramento because my mom was going, undergoing kidney failure, mm -hmm. going to dialysis. And I realized that I want to help all these people but I want to help the person that means the most to me, and that was my mother. So I went back home, quit my job at 24 Hour Fitness Corporate. I was a project a coordinator with them, and I started a nonprofit called Fitness Without Borders. And um, when we've had programs in the Sacramento and Elkbrook area, but so I, start, I met him in 2007. We gave birth in 2009, 2010, and 2011. We started our first care home for the elderly in 2010, and another one in 2013. Life has been incredibly busy. You know, with all, not just having the kids, but after giving birth, you know, I loved your little thing. It was, there's, you're a business owner, you're self-employed. I'm a business owner, and that means after I gave birth, it doesn't matter. I don't get maternity leave. Maternity leave. I have to uh, make sure that things are still operating. Of course, I could have, um, I could have let other people handle it, but I'm a little bit of a control person. And it was the very beginning of the business too. When you're growing a business, you have to be in the forefront. So I was working really hard, but I made sure that my health was a priority. So that brings us to here and now, 2013. I decided to put that picture on my Facebook and it went viral. And a lot of people were upset and a lot of people were inspired. But what kind of disappointed me in this whole process is, is that instead of people asking me what I did wrong in posting that picture, I wish people asked me what I did right, what made me successful. And in this group, I'll, it'll be the first time I'll tell you why and what made me successful. Number one, I had a desire. Okay, when you create a desire, you, you become uncomfortable. And that discomfort is actually what's gonna make you grow. You can't get anywhere if you're comfortable with where you're at. You have to desire something greater. So I created a desire for something greater. I knew I wanted to be in incredible shape after having kids. It's not easy, but I knew I wanted it. Number two, I created a goal. I created that long-term goal and I created short-term goals. And every single day I thought about my goal. If you wake up in the morning and you don't have a goal, then you're just going to end up anywhere in life because you're just going to be twiddling along. You can't do that. You have to have a specific goal and work towards that every single day. And that's what I did. Every morning I wake up, I write down six goals that I want to complete. And I make sure those six goals are not all business-related either. I believe in, my, I call it my three Ps. My professional, my personal, and my physical goals. Because you have to have balance in your life. You, you, it's not a matter of if, but when you will fall if you don't have balance in your life. So I always had those six goals, targeting those three Ps. I not only created goals, but I created a plan. 
And sometimes that plan didn't work, but it doesn't matter because it's all about consistency. It's all about reflection and then following through and, and getting up and doing it again. <clears throat> Differently, of course. You don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> and then I also created a deadline. You know, at this time, the, when I took this photo, my deadline was summertime. It wasn't August 25th when I took this photo. It was the summertime, so I gave myself a little bit of room. But yeah, you have to give yourself a deadline because there's no urgency. I mean, you guys know how it is to have urgency because you work with deadlines all the time. There's nothing like moving a seller or a buyer, like saying someone's about to buy it off, you know, up underneath you in the next day or so. So you have to have a deadline for yourself in your goals. So I had a desire, I had a goal, I had a plan, I had a deadline. Those things are, those things are what made me successful. Some of the things in my brain that helped me become successful throughout this process is my faith. You know, you can believe in whatever you believe in. I believe that you need to give yourself, you need to, you need to have, believe in something bigger than yourself to push you through this. You have to have faith, you have to have faith that wherever you are right now, you can become this other person. Even though you can't see it or feel it, you have to believe that you can become it. So I had faith. I had discipline. I had desire. I had passion. Passion is probably the biggest thing I had. Knowing that here I am, not only am I a role model to other people, I'm a role model to my children. And I wanted to show people that it's really important to take care of your body. You know, going back to my mother, she was so successful. If you meet her, if she were walking right now, she would light up this room. She really is an incredible woman. I mean, I watched her growing up, and she was successful at everything she did. And she accumulated a lot of wealth, a lot of you know, notoriety in the things that she did. She, but the thing is, she didn't take care of her health. And I know that right now, she would get everything that she has, everything, to have good health. You can't buy it. And so that's my message to you, and that's my message to all those who are critics of my message right here, what's your excuse? There is no excuse. The only thing that you own in this world is your body. I don't care if you own your house. I don't care if you own your, you, know, you think you own your kids. You own the, the clothes on your, that you're wearing. It doesn't matter. You don't really own that. The only thing that, the only vehicle that you have is your body. So my message also to you guys as realtors, you know, that passion. Wow, you are part of an amazing journey in people's lives. You are part of the biggest investment they're going to make in their life. Be passionate about that. They're going to make memories in that house that you're going to sell them. They're going to grow and, 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 and feel so invested in that experience. So if you're passionate about the things you do, you're going to believe it, you're going to breathe it, people are going to see it, they're going to want to be around it, and you're going to be naturally successful because that's what happened to me. I had a passion about fitness, and people knew it in my presence. People knew it in my talk, in my walk, and the things that I did, that even those who were a little bit critical of me on television said, you know what, I don't like the message, but I know what our intention was, and it's true. My intention, with all integrity, was to never make anyone feel bad, but for people to say, you know what, if I can do it, so can you. And with that, if anyone has any questions, bring them my way. <laughs> okay. What's your three P's again? Personal, professional, and? Personal, professional, and physical. Physical. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I want to touch on or ask is kind of really, with three kids, I mean, Rochelle and I have two, and we're super busy with two kids. I mean, it's going back to being purposeful about using your time wisely, and I see that you blog about that, you write yeah. about that, so would you talk more about how you're very purposeful with your time? Yes, so... You know, people don't realize um, how long it takes. Do you guys all know how long it takes to do five loads of laundry? Yeah. 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 How long? A week. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to run a mile? How long does it take you to cook dinner? How long does it take you to um, to drive from home to work? You guys need to be aware of how long it takes to do things and how long it takes to do things when you're distracted. Because for me, it takes me an hour to do laundry when I'm distracted and watch there's a show on TV. But if there's nothing on and it's just me in the laundry, it takes me 25 minutes to do five loads of laundry. Of course, it's not washing. It's just folding and putting it all away. 25 minutes. It takes me 
Um, I know how long it takes me to do any task. So what I would say to all of you is, when you're really focused, you can get things done a lot quicker. And not only that, but don't do things when you're not focused. Don't do things when it's not natural. For, me, for example, I don't do laundry when my kids are awake. You know, I don't write because I'm a writer. I don't write when they're awake. I know when my flow times are. So know when your flow times are. My flow time to work out is early morning. My flow time to, um, to write is late night. My flow time to do laundry is um, Thursday, Saturday mornings. Um, so you need to know what your flow times are. You need to know exactly how you operate. And when you do have time to do things like work out, you need to be very intense. You can't just be on an elliptical reading the magazine. You need to be very present. So that's what my biggest thing is, and my biggest advice for everybody here, is that you need to be very present in whatever task that you're doing. You need to not think of anything else. You need to be present. So if you're running, think about running. Think about losing weight. Think about your goals. Think about going a little bit further. So in terms of time management, I don't do a lot of things that waste my time. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. Funny, because I have a Facebook. But there's certain, there's certain times I'm on it. I'm on it when I'm, my, when I'm putting my baby in bed, you know, or, or, or when I'm, I don't know. Whenever I have time, I'm on, on Facebook. But I don't watch a lot of TV. That's another thing. I don't really, I don't think that there's a lot of programs out there that are really beneficial. And if there are, I do watch them. I like documentaries, I like history channels. But all the other stuff is just fluff. So you really need to um, value the things that you put into your life. You don't want to waste your time that doesn't give you value. So that's my answer to time management. Anyone else? Yes? Yes, thanks. Do you ever, when you're feeling down, what do you do to get out of it? Or do you ever feel down, I guess? Oh, I feel down all the time. <laughs> Does anyone read my website here? Has anyone read it? So if you read my website, I started a blog in 2005 at, in, in the death of my bulimia. I started it, I, and, I, and that's another answer, is I write. So when I'm feeling down, I write how I'm feeling, and then I write about what my goals are, and then I write a plan. It always makes me feel better to create a to-do list. Or what I do is I get up. I mean, it's so easy. You can